I put a an EM2000 keyboard workstation on eBay for sale, a person purchased the, the, the keyboard and said when I mailed it to them, it was uh, broken in shipping and didn't want it and sent it back. And he sent me back a different keyboard that was not a working keyboard. And then eBay uh, gave him the money back. That's kind of it in a nutshell. I uh, placed on my keyboard an EM2000, a Roland EM2000 uh, for um, sale on eBay for $850. I had a particular buyer who bid uh, three times, uh, rising up until he finally hit my reserve. eBay replied to me and said that uh, they had a buyer. So um, I, I packaged the keyboard up through the address they gave me and sent it to them for a $60.07 charge through UPS. On uh, May 5th, the money was transferred to my bank of $649.93. On 5-6, I got notice that the keyboard had been delivered. 5-7, um, the buyer refused it, saying that it was damaged in shipping, and he sent me a picture of a broken key. So I sent back to him saying that I was basically sorry that it got damaged in shipping because I thought I packaged it up pretty well. And uh, if he was not satisfied, send it back. So eBay then charged me $72.73 um, to give him a return UPS shipping label. He returned it, but when I got the keyboard that he returned, it was a completely different keyboard. The one that I sent was in immaculate shape. It, was, it looked brand new, even though it was probably uh, 15 or 16 years old. And the one he sent me was destroyed. I mean, I could, there's pictures of it that's, um, uh, it, at first of it doesn't turn on. It's got scars. It's, uh, there's about three or four things that are absolutely broken on it. And it is just, and it's not my keyboard. There's a sticker on it that says that somebody bought it from Goodwill for $49.99. So what it boiled down to was he had bought that keyboard and sent me his keyboard because he knew that it, uh, when eBay would see it, he would they, they would see that I got my keyboard back and he did, didn't know that he had that one. So anyway, they made a judgment saying that he's gonna uh, get the dispute because I sent him a bad keyboard. Uh, I notified eBay uh, and with an argument, but they don't accept anything anymore. And uh, then on um, 611, they pulled uh, $649.93 out of my account, plus $20 for a dispute fee. So I basically lost $152.80 plus my keyboard. Uh, at this point in time, I, I, yeah, I mean, it's obvious if there's some way it could be resolved or I get, my, get the money, I wouldn't have any problem, but I don't see that happening. The issue that I have now is that we'd like to see, at least get the information out that this is a problem and eBay should be aware of the problem and try to uh, find a different way to handle these disputes. I don't think their disputes are uh, working right. Look, look at it from my point of view and realize that, that uh, he was not right. I understand, I've talked to a few people and I understand that eBay usually uh, resolves the dispute to the buyer. It's not, it's not 100%, but I understand that it's a pretty good percentage. And that is something that needs to be considered also because the buyer uh, oftentimes can be the person that's creating the scam. And eBay doesn't seem to realize that. So to, to, let, to let anybody know that there's you know, the potential to do this, uh, you have to be aware that these guys can do this kind of stuff. My keyboard, uh, an EM2000, like I say, is a very old machine. Um, to expect somebody to have a, a, a the same machine and, and do this is completely out of my realm of thinking. And because of that, I did not, through my ignorance or naivety, take your pick, uh, did not bother to write down the serial number of my machine so that I could compare them. That was my mistake. I have four numbers. I have four numbers and all of them direct me to the website. There, there's nobody you can talk to. They don't let you talk to anybody. You go to the website and there's nothing. Uh, once, once the dispute is finished, there's no way you can contact them about it. I have tried uh, many times. I've had, I have a friend who's a computer um, repairman and 
guru, so to speak. And he spent uh, probably two or three hours at my house one day trying to get on, trying to find a website that I could connect with them with, and it's not there. They do not let you connect with them. They just tell if they if they want you to, they'll send you a a um, little box that you can type in whatever you want to type in. But if once that's done, you have no other um, recourse. It's all over. Just be aware that you're gonna you're gonna get stiffed. There's uh, there's not too much recourse. There's a good possibility that if you're trying to sell something and you're se and you're selling to a person that you don't know. There's a good chance you. There's a possibility, not a good chance, but there's a possibility you're going to get stiffed. So be aware uh, and try to cover all your bases before you uh, make the the uh, the deal. My my mistake again was not writing down the serial number of the instrument before I mailed it.